Hi, everybody. Welcome to Bookish Road Trip. And I am Mary Helen Sheriff, one of the uh, tour guides here at Bookish Road Trip. And I have with me a very special guest. It is Kathy L. Murphy, who is the CEO of the International Pulpwood Queens and Timber Guys Reading Nation, which is the largest book club in the world with over 700 chapters. Is that right, Kathy? 800. 800. 800 chapters. Um, so she's going to tell us some books that she recommends for us to read this month in June. Take the wheel, Kathy. I'm very excited about our uh, summer reading list. It's going to be amazing. So for those of you still stuck at home with COVID, I have got some books for you. First of all, our book of the month is Pearl River Mansion. And this is a wonderful book by a uh, author in um, um, Mississippi. His name is Richard Schwartz and it's written with Wendy Carter. Wendy just happens to be one of our Pulpwood Queen book club authors. And so we're really excited that uh, to have her on the list. And I had right in front of me, where did they go? Oh, I have to put on my glasses to tell you about this book because I'm at the age where I have to use the readers. But Pearl River Mansion is the story of the heir of, the, of Joan Chandler, Tyler Chandler, who stands to inherit everything a man could want, including Pearl River Mansion. It's a 450 acre post Civil War state that lists, sits at the end of one of the many fingers of Pearl River. Now Tyler's mother makes a game out of controlling people by trading on her wealth, but Tyler refuses her money, which always comes with strings and struggles to make it on his own, trading instead on his intelligent and exceptional good looks. But he's not as good as the game as he is and finds himself trapped in a marriage that infuriates his mother. Fate intercedes and for the first time in her life, Joan sees a use for the alligators that have kept her well away from the water's edge. This is a real page turner, you all. And I know there's a little bit of glare, but it's a beautiful cover. And I think you won't be able to put this book down. All right, that's our book of the month. Next up is a wonderful story among the um, Ma uh, Maasai. And this is by Julia Cutler. It's a memoir and it's her story about when she leaves the United States in 1999 to teach at the first school of Maasai girls in East Africa, marking the beginning of a 20 year journey to empower young Maasai uh, women through education. Working alongside local teachers, Cutler is transformed by the community. And she finds in Tanzania by witnessing the life-changing impacts of education on her students many of whom face staggering poverty, forced marriages, genital cutting, and other forms of gender-based violence. Uh, this isn't the first time I've picked books about memoirs in Africa. I picked another book once that was um, a young woman who was with the Peace Corps. But fascinating stories, and as always, our Pulpo Queen books are global and diverse. I think you won't be able to put this thing down, and teachers will love this one. Next up is another one of her author, award-winning author. Her name is uh, Joy Ross Davis and it's Mad Woman of Preacher's Cove. I'm trying to get this just right there. It's the story of Lucy Adams, a woman who was horribly disfigured in a fire that claimed the lives of her husband and her children. After the tragic loss of her beauty, her voice and her family, Lucy became an artistic genius sculpting lifelike dolls replicas of the children of Preacher's Cove. Lucy and her workshop are hidden in the back of a local resort, a hotel and restaurant complex owned and operated by her sister. Well, this is uh, followed by a series of death from lightning strikes at Preacher's Cove, and a reporter arrives to solve the mystery of the coincidental incidents. When the reporter finds a secret place in the woods, the hollows where druids once roamed, he digs up the deeply buried answers and the mystery of Preacher's Coast begins to unravel. This is a good tale and one that you might want to read during the day. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then I can't go on about this book enough. Sharp as a Super Serpent's Tooth, even other stories. This is a brand new author I discovered uh, last year with her first book, um, Walking the Wrong Way Home, Mandy Haynes. And Mandy Haynes also now just happens to be the executive director of the Pulpwood Queens, but her books stand alone. Um, they're short story collections. They're as different as Blue Jays and Starlings, but they share two really strong traits, a strong will to survive and the innocence of doves. I have never read um, a new debut author such as Mandy Hayes with, with her collection of short stories. They remind me of Eudora Welty, and I know that in the future she'll be one of the um, contemporary uh, leaders in Southern fiction. So do check this out and check out her other book, Rocking, Walking the Wrong Way Home. They're both her Pulpwood Queen book club selections. Excellent books. And then last we've got Renee Winchester's Outbound Train, a novel. And this starts in 1976. Memories from a night near the rain railroad track 16 years earlier haunt Barbara Parker. She wrestles with past demons every night, then wakes to the train's 530 whistle. Exhausted and dreading the day, she keeps her hands busy working in a textile plant known as the blue jean plant, all the while worrying about her teenage daughter, Carol Ann. The whistle of the train, the hum of those machines, and the struggles to survive drives Barbara when an unexpected layoff creates a financial emergency and a desperate pressure of poverty is overwhelming. Well, Renee Winchester is not a first time author. This is a second book for us. And um, she got a really nice blurb from one of our other authors, Lisa Wingate, who's a New York Times bestselling author. So I think you will really, really enjoy our June picks. So thank you for letting me share those um, books. And I just hope everybody just has a wonderful reading summer. Thank you so much, Kathy. It was great to have you on as always.